Okay, in this video we're going to start talking about different types of feedback and the different types of amplifiers that we can form when we use feedback. Now feedback is generally categorized by the connection at the input and the output. And we use different connections for different types of signals at the input and the output. For instance, we might have a voltage signal or a current signal at either the input or the output. Now, if we're dealing with a voltage signal at the input, we'd like to have a series connection at the input. If we're dealing with current, on the other hand, we would like to have a shunt connection. This makes sense, as when we're measuring voltage, we'd like a high impedance. When we're measuring current, we'd like a low impedance. And we know that series connections increase impedance and shunt connections decrease impedance. Conversely, at the output, if we're outputting a voltage, we'd like to have a low impedance, and hence we'd like to use a shunt connection at the output. And if we're outputting current, we'd like to have a high impedance, so we'd like to have a series connection at the output. Now we label our feedback by the type of connection we have at the input and then the output. For instance, if we have a series connection at the input and a series connection at the output, we call it series-series feedback. And this means that we have a voltage at the input and a current at the output. This means that we would have a transconductance amplifier. Similarly, if we have a series shunt amplifier, we have a voltage at the input and a voltage at the output this would be a voltage amplifier. If we have a current at the input and a current at the output, we would have a shunt connection at the input and a series connection at the output. This would be a current amp. Finally, if we have a shunt connection at the input and a shunt connection at the output, we would have a current at the input and a voltage at the output. This would be a trans-resistance amp. Now, we're going to use two port networks in order to calculate the parameters for these four different types of amplifiers. If we have a transconductance amplifier, then, we need, then we're going to be inputting a voltage and outputting a current. This means that our feedback network needs to input a current and output a voltage. In other words, we need to have an impedance network to describe our feedback network. So we're going to use Z parameters. For voltage amplifiers and current amplifiers, we're going to use a special type of parameter called hybrid parameters. And there are two types of hybrid parameters, H parameters and G parameters. And we'll describe these in an upcoming video. Finally, if we have a trans resistance amplifier, we're inputting a current and outputting a voltage. This means that the feedback network needs to input a voltage and output a current so it's an, a quantity of admittance. So we'll use Y parameters in that particular type of feedback network. Now, one of the things that's interesting about feedback is that it has an impact on the impedance and also on the bandwidth of a system. When we have a shunt type of feedback, it reduces the impedance by a factor of one plus the loop gain. Remember, our loop gain is defined by a quantity T, which is equal to A times beta, or the forward gain times the reverse gain. If we have a series connection, it increases the impedance by a factor of 1 plus the loop gain. Now remember, feedback always increases our bandwidth by a factor of 1 plus the loop gain. Okay, next we're going to do a brief review of two port network parameters. Specifically, we're going to look at Z parameters, Y parameters, H parameters, and G parameters. These are the network parameters that will describe the feedback network that we're going to use in the case of a transconductance amplifier, a voltage amplifier, a current amplifier, or a trans-resistance amplifier. And we'll look at those in the next video.